we assume they followed a star. What we're told is there was a star in the east. They saw rise in the east, a great portent, a great sign that a king was born. But we don't know if that star led the whole way. This is, and this isn't to diminish the Christmas story or the one you know or the one that you hold in your heart that helps explain the mystery of the Incarnation. It's just simply to say we make some assumptions about the Christmas story just as we make some assumptions about our own lives and our own spirituality and the way our lives connect with God. We assume that God always wants more from us than we're, we're able to give. We assume that we're not worthy of God. We assume that if we just do the, the next right little thing, if we say this prayer or, or show up to church at this particular time, God's going to give us the thing we want. We assume that we need to do more to make ourselves worthy of God's love. We sometimes assume that we've done something so wrong that God couldn't possibly love us. And just like those early assumptions, these are not necessarily true. Mary, who we heard about in the story of the Annunciation today, Mary was a young woman from a town, a small town in the north of, in the north of Israel, the north of Palestine, called, called Nazareth. And Mary was this young woman who God spoke to. The angel came to and said, you will bear the Son of God. Through you, God will bring into the world perfect light and peace and joy and hope and love for nothing is impossible with God. What I love about the story of the Annunciation is it's our story too. We don't need to just look at Mary and say, she's the only one who God can work through in some extraordinary way. And then we have to assume that we have to get our, 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 our house in order properly, our spiritual house in order. If we only say morning prayer according to the prayer book every morning, God will work through us. I'm not saying that's a bad idea. I think if you read morning prayer out of the prayer book every morning, that's great for your spiritual life. I'm not knocking that as a practice. But we don't need to do that for God to work through us. For nothing is impossible with God. God can work through you. God can work through me. God is working through you, and God is working through me, and God is working through this place in ways sometimes we don't even understand. That is the beauty of the story of the Annunciation, is that we don't have to work our way up, get the right credentials, check all these right boxes to get to be worthy of God's love, to be worthy of God's grace, and for God to work through us. May this story inspire us to bear witness to the light and the love and the joy and hope of Christ, inspired by the witness of Mary, who said, let it be with me according to thy word. May we too say to God, let it be with me according to thy word. And may we bear witness to Jesus Christ in our lives. Amen. As you are able, would you please stand and let us join together in confessing our faith in the living God through the form of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, sees from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. As we wait in prayerful expectation for Christ's return, let us pray for the world that at his return Christ's love would be found abundantly, saying, O come, O come, Emmanuel. O Key of David, guide your church throughout the world to be a place of truth and love. Guide the bishops, priests, deacons, and members of the church to serve you faithfully. We pray especially for the candidates for bishop in this diocese and for those serving as electors. We pray to you, O Lord, O come, O come, Emmanuel. O branch of Jesse's tree, visit the leaders of this world that their decisions would ease the suffering of this world. Carefully steward its resources and bring peace to all places that know violence, especially Ukraine, Russia, Palestine, and Israel. We pray to you, O Lord. O wisdom from on high, we give thanks for the people of St. Paul's and for all of those touched by our many ministries. We are grateful for the faith that has been nurtured here and for the generations of faithfulness that have sustained this congregation. We pray to you, O Lord. O dayspring from on high, we pray for all of those who are sick, hungry, oppressed, imprisoned, and marginalized. Visit them with your mercy. We pray especially for Alan, Jeff, Donna, Barbara, Paula, Amelia, Lewis, Scott, Ella, Matthew, Dean, Bill, and Tim. And for those we name now, either spoken aloud or in the quiet of our heart. We pray to you, O Lord. O Lord of might, we pray for all of those who have entered into your everlasting joy. In our own day, may we be reunited with them and may we take our place in your heavenly kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Good morning. It's good to be to be with you on this fourth Sunday of of Advent. Um, the few, the proud, have have showed up. We're glad you're glad you're here. Always tricky. Every seven years, we have to we have to do this. So good to be good to be with you. Uh, our Christmas services are at three o'clock this afternoon and at seven o'clock this evening. Uh, the three o'clock will be will be live streamed, and then tomorrow morning, Christmas morning, there will be a service of Holy Eucharist with hymns and carols at 10 a.m. And our friends from Asbury First will be joining us again uh, for for that service as well. Next Sunday, we have our regular eight o'clock Holy Eucharist in the chantry, and the 10:15 service is a is a service of parish lessons and carols with Holy with Holy Communion. So do make sure those are on your calendars. There's rest of the announcements that are in the bulletin that I encourage you, uh, encourage you to read. If I don't have a chance to see you uh, before we get to our Christmas celebrations, uh, or if this is your Christmas celebration, um, Merry Christmas to you all, and a very, a very happy, um, very happy New Year. A little something different this morning. We have an offertory hymn this morning as opposed to an anthem. So I would invite you to now stand as you are able and join in singing the hymn uh, 438, Tell Out My Soul, the paraphrase of the Magnificat, Mary's hymn, hymn 438.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus Christ. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with blessed Paul and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the mystery of the Incarnation. Behold Christ in bread and wine. May the Word become flesh in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.